Hey guys, so since I just survived a 5.1 magnitude earthquake that was shaking the chair that I'm sitting in up and down for quite a few seconds here in downtown Vancouver on top of a high rise. And I'm not kidding, guys. The epicenter was not in Vancouver. As you see on the map, it was on the Sunshine Coast, but not so far. And it was widely felt. So it was first USGS said 4.7, then 5.1, then 4. 4.8 but I really felt it it was really weird um, I put the video in the end screen I, I made a video about it and I you know I almost wanted to make this video unfortunately I was a little late but you would have caught me moving up and down uh, live on camera while I was filming this but hey the earthquakes continue also in Greece uh, in the Santorini area, that earthquake swarm is still continuing and that is causing problems, um, chaos, as many say, for the holiday makers. And also the cruise ships that are usually docking in the ports at Santorini, even through the off-season winter time, they are changing the course and scientists are warning of an uncertain outlook for Santorini. So what is happening? Let's have a look at the current list of earthquakes. So we have to zoom in into the Santorini area here. There's other earthquakes as well, but for us right now, what is of interest is this area here in Santorini. And what we see, the pink dots are the recent ones within the last six hours and the red uh, ones are the ones within the last 12 hours. And so now, interestingly, there's more on the west. It was traveling to the east just a while ago. And what we see here, it's again in this area between Santorini and Amorgos. And let's have a look at the magnitude. So this, now it's in Europe already February 22nd. So the day started out right after midnight with a 0 0.2. Let's see where that is. And that's not even there. That's at another place that is probably not related um, although waves can still travel but good thing for Santorini okay the day didn't start with a 2.0 but maybe it ended with a 2.0 yes it did so this was further west almost at midnight a minute before midnight a 2.0 so that was here the other one that we have seen that is here so well, there's a lot of tectonic movements in place there as well. But the issue for us right now is that it's rumbling, that magma is intruding here in this area from the Santorini crater, moving towards that direction to Amorgos, and that's probably causing this rumbling. While the magma is lubricating all the areas, the fault lines that are down there, it can also trigger some fault lines that then can cause higher magnitude earthquakes. So the 21st of February was quite a busy day. If we scroll down here, 3.1, 3.3, where was that? That was here, shallow depth again, two kilometers. Um, the 2.7 here, where was that? That was also here. And then 2.5, 2.4, that was not in the area. What about the 3.0? Where was that? That was here in our area again, shallow depth at two kilometers. So we can scroll down lots of earthquakes on the 21st, a 2.4, a 2.6 that was here. And there are shallower ones and there are deeper ones because there's lots of fault lines and crusts. And so this can all be affected. Where are we here? 2.8, where was that? That was not in that area. That was a little further out. That was more closer to Athens as it looks like. Interesting, okay. So let's back go back to Santorini and you see the 21st, lots of stuff rumbling around there. Where's the bigger one? There's a 3.5 also here in that area um, at seven kilometers depth, 2.8 also in this area, 2.9 also in this area. So this doesn't, this only goes back the last 24 hours. So 
if I go back to the last 48 hours, hopefully it gives me more that has happened on the 21st. So the 21st was quite an intense day when it comes to the number of earthquakes again. It had slowed down a little bit the days before. What was the February 20th doing? So we had a 4.0 on February 20th, but that's also a little bit further out. So is this rumbling that's happening here transporting some waves into these areas? That's the question, right? What else did we have? Lots of earthquakes on the 20th even exceeds the list that I have here. And uh, I'll show you another graph here. This is the current life seismogram from the measuring station Terra on Santorini. Here is a map where you see there's the location of Terra that is currently measuring this. And you see there's some larger shocks that we see there. But I'd also like to show you um, an updated um, graph about the earthquake frequency over time per hour. And there you can really see the earthquake swarm um, started on January 26th and it was really escalating until like February 14th, 15th, and then it was gradually coming down. And that's how it remains. It looks like that the last two days it was going a little bit further down, but they also do not have the updated um, data from all the last ones that we have seen there yet. So it seems that it's gradually dying down, but it can catch up at any time. We just don't know. So what is going on with the tourism? Some people say that Santorini's future hangs in the balance as scientists, more and more scientists say that they're seeing deep magma movements. And you know, there's 3.5 million people coming to, to Santorini per year. This is a getaway that attracts lots of like sun seekers, honeymooners, like couples, they call it Instagram Island. Um, but you know, through this event, definitely the lives of many locals, but also the tourism industry were quite rocked in the last three weeks because we've seen like over 23,000 earthquakes on the island. There's another opinion from a geophysicist from the University of Oregon, Emily Hoft, and she has been um, surveilling Santorini for quite a, a while, the volcano there. And she says, well, we're seeing deep magma movements, but this does not necessarily have to lead to an eruption. She, she says, the earthquakes that we're seeing, they come with this movement, where they follow the magma and they are relieving pressure beneath Santorini. So that is her opinion, that what we're seeing right now is relieving pressure. And she says it might actually reduce the likelihood of an immediate volcanic activity, meaning an eruption. So she's kind of reassuring locals and tourists that most of these magma intrusions that are happening there right now never reach the surface with the magma often entering the crust and just staying there. That is true. But I mean, if you follow my channel, you know what happened in Iceland. A big magma intrusion started on November 10th, like 15 kilometer long magma dike that was underground. And here at Santorini, we maybe have one that's even longer in the 30 kilometer range, so twice as much. And yeah, that's remained underground. But then at in Iceland, I mean, it's a different volcanic system, but we then did see the magma chamber refill. And then we saw eruptions and we're waiting for one right now. I'm also making an update video later for you on that. So there could be another event soon where magma is pushed out of the magma chamber again, and then it might reach the surface and would probably, well, cause an underwater eruption unless it erupts at the Nukameni Island that's in the Santorini crater again, like it already did in the, in the 50s. So... She says, well, there's always a chance that magma could break through. Currently, the most likely location for such an event would be underwater southwest of Anhydra. You see that on the map. So um, 
she also thinks that even if we did see an eruption that it would not be dramatic um, only if ash was to be released into the air it could majorly impact air travel and and be a possible blow to tourists well there's others that say well if we see an underwater eruption like it could build craters there could walls collapse fault lines there could be collapses that could trigger tsunamis that would reach the islands and and the greek and the turkish coast and you know, what should the travel industry do? I mean, Greece has declared the state of emergency for Santorini, for the island of Amorgos, Anafi, and, and other islands, and uh, probably until March 14th, if, if everything remains the same or, or calms down. A Greek seismologist, uh, Kostas Papatsakos, he said the outlook for Santorini at the moment is hard to predict. And he says, we are monitoring not only seismographs, but also numerous other systems that tra track the ground deformation, the land rise underneath Santorini and gas emissions. And that has been detected, a land rise and gas emissions and, and satellite data. So he says, at this moment, I can honestly say we do not have a definitive forecast and it is too early to assess the current slight de-escalation. I've, I've showed this to you, right? He calls it a slight de-escalation of seismic activity. He says we have encountered many surprises with systems like this in the past. So how is the travel industry responding to the Santorini earthquakes? So there has been no major damage so far to Santorini, to its building, to that popular tourist destination. But of course, this unprecedented, unusual seismic activity is a big concern, not only for the scientists, but also for the tourists. Many countries have given travel warnings. And the Hellenic Coast Guard is driving around there currently, and it's enforcing traffic limits for several ports, for the port of Atinios, the port of Amudi Bay, the port of Fira Bay, the port of Kofos and Tirassia and the Bay of Armeni. So basically all of them. And they also want to build a new evacuation port that would be safe from landslides, cliff collapses that could occur near the existing ports. And that would also have enough capacity to get people off the island if necessary. So but what some tourist offices are reporting that despite this uncertainty around Santorini, the, the demand for Greece in general remains strong. But Greece is bigger, has many islands, right? They're saying also Santorini remains a top choice for our honeymoon clients, <laughs> despite some concerns about recent earthquake activity. Yeah, the earthquakes would not be so much of my concern. I would worry about the volcanoes and possible collapses and tsunamis and yeah, a potential bigger earthquake that would also cause a tsunami. But he says our honeymooners are especially committed to Santorini. For them, this is Santorini is just not a trip. It's their dream. And they're saying we're keeping travelers informed and we're working with our partners to ensure a smooth experience. But the cruise ships, they don't seem to take their chances. They are avoiding Santorini. It's still off season, right? But the cruise lines, um, had still booked port stays um, in the Aegean Sea this month. For example, the Viking Star was scheduled to be Santorini's first cruise ship of the season, and the Viking mother company has canceled that stop at Santorini. Instead, um, they're docking at the port of Suda in Crete. The next scheduled visit for Viking would be March 11th, so we will see if that's going to happen. And a representative of Viking has that that's, that sentence, if you've seen my last Campi Fligri video, where the seasoned scientists are speaking out, they're saying, don't believe what the officials are telling you when they're saying we're monitoring the situation. Because, and that's what they said, and, and watch the videos, it's really, really interesting. They said monitoring does not save you, it, which makes sense, right? And this is really what we're hearing everywhere, also here, what Viking is, sa Viking is saying. 
We're continuing to monitor the situation and we will make changes if necessary, notifying any impacted guests and their travel advisors directly. We continuously monitor our global operations, including the recent seismic activity recorded in the Aegean Sea. And in line with recent Greek government advice, we will be updating our itineraries, proactively replacing Santorini for sailings, departing in May and April this year. Oh, so they're already doing this. So probably then their March 11th cruise will not happen at Santorini. So yeah, guys, what can I say? we only can watch what's going to happen, right? Um, hopefully it'll die down, it'll get less and less and less, and then it calm down and disappears for hopefully a very long while, but it could change in a second and we could see something more drastic. I'll be on the pulse with you guys, for you. Um, and I was really on the pulse. I, I said it might, but that I'm sitting here in this chair, it was feeling like the earthquake. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It was strange and it was way stronger than the one I felt last year. So I was making right away, basically while it still happened, was making this video here that I put in the end screen. But check out my playlists about Santorini, about Campi Flegri, the super volcano in Italy, and about Iceland, just everything. Just subscribe, like this video, and if you want to support my channel, the links are in the description. You can buy me a coffee or two because I saved my coffee when the earthquake happened. I took it with me, which was kind of, I didn't even realize that, guys, really. All I was thinking, I gotta get the dogs. I gotta get the dogs away from the windows. But then I realized, while well, the coffee's standing on the kitchen countertop, I had it next to my computer, which is at a desk right by the windows. So I was so concerned about my coffee because without it, <laughs> I can't keep going. I'm making so many videos right now, one after the other, like basically, I think it's almost for 18 hours per day I'm producing these videos right now because the volcanoes are rumbling everywhere and uh, I don't want to miss it. I want to give the news out to you. I mean, I'm even missing some because yeah, the day only has that many hours. So yeah, check out my buymeacoffee.com slash silky site. The link is in the description. And if you want to become a member, um, check out the membership level, click the join button. I'm releasing some outtakes right after this video, guys. So I hope to see you soon, wherever you will be in one of these channels and websites. Stay safe. Bye-bye.